Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Jay and welcome to the channel. And welcome back to October Lake in Planet Zoo, a series where we're building this really cool modern zoo situated in the highlands of Canada. And today we're going to be continuing work on the park by increasing our tropical house's capacity by a total of six red rough lemurs. If that sounds good to you, please do consider giving the video a like if you did like it, and of course do subscribe for more Planet Zoo content. With the intro out of the way, let's get into talking about what it is we're going to be doing today. So as you can see, and as you've heard me say a second ago, we are starting work on a red rough lemur habitat. And if that sounds odd to you, it probably does because I did say I was going to focus entirely on the aquatic pack animals for a while. But this is clearly not an aquatic animal. I don't even know if these guys can swim. Probably not. So I mean, they're the furthest away from aquatic as can be. They're completely arboreal. You know, they live in the trees. But um, basically, I, I decided to do these guys for a couple of reasons. One, because I had this really cool idea for a habitat that I couldn't get out of my head and I really wanted to do it. And secondly, um, well, I kind of have a good idea for the king penguin and the grey seal, for their habitats. But I kind of want to take my time with it because those are going to be some pretty big ones and I'm really looking forward to building them. But I want to kind of finish up the tropical house a little bit more first. So it might be this episode and then the next episode might also be in the tropical house and then we'll move on to the seal and the penguin. So you guys can, you know, hold out for a little bit while we finish this place up. And also there's so many other great videos uh, out there right now of other content creators having made the penguin and seal habitat. So feel free to check those out. There's some really cool ones out there. So definitely give those a watch uh, while you're waiting for mine. And to be completely honest with you, even though this is an aquatic pack, I feel like it still benefits from a lot of the stuff that did come from the aquatic pack, so I feel like we're still kind of fitting in that vibe. And also, this is going to sound a little bit uh, like exaggerated, but I gotta say, I think this is the best habitat that I have ever built. Personally anyways, or maybe my favourite, maybe not necessarily the best, but my favourite habitat that I've ever built. It just works really well, I think, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. So it houses, like I said, a total of six red ruffed lemurs and they have access to both the interior and the exterior of the tropical house via those holes you see in the walls just back there. And what you've seen me do on screen right now is just create a little bit of a moat. It's not really even a moat, it's just the habitat itself descends a little bit lower and then there's a flat wall to where the guests can view these animals from so the animals can't climb or uh, jump out but the uh, guests get a really good kind of eye level view with the animals. So gives you the illusion of being closer to the animals than you actually are, while still giving you a good amount of separation. So that's quite nice. Here uh, is something I've added, which I think makes the front of the tropical house look so much better. It's just adding in some trim. So adding in some of these pieces of slightly more natural looking wood, and I think it looks really, really good. Makes the whole thing look a bit more clean. And you're going to see me do that a lot more throughout the episode. I'm going to trim up the top of the um, of the front wall as well, not just the bottom. So it just ends up looking really clean, I think, really nice. Here I'm just adding in a bit of fencing to the outside. I will end up changing it to concrete because the concrete walls now are recolorable and uh, we can use them to kind of get more of the blue, green, gray kind of color tone that we've been setting for this area. And I think it looks pretty good. I, I was thinking the other day that this whole front area, the especially the blocky kind of planter area, looks kind of brutalist. And I'm like, where did that come from? And I think it's because I've been playing the game Control so much recently and it has a lot of architecture like that. So maybe that's where that came from. And maybe, you know, it does look a bit brutalist, but when we add in the plants and stuff, it looks so much uh, warmer, so much more welcoming and it looks really good. So. While right now it may look a bit intense and a bit too like hard edged, it will look a bit nicer as we go forward. Now you have just seen me put some glass in the concrete wall for people to peek through and now we're going right into the interior to start work there. First up we're going to put in a little bit of a glass fence so people can actually look into the uh, habitat. I might switch that out to become one way glass. Uh, I didn't do that in this episode but I might do between them just because I want the lemurs to have a bit more privacy on the interior. Um, this interior, in fact the whole habitat, was a little bit tricky to build because these animals are relatively small. In fact, they might be the f some of the smallest animals you can get in the game while remaining habitat animals. 
so they don't need a massive habitat, but having to work around these relatively cramped spaces is a bit of a challenge. But I think having to work around that challenge kind of helps fuel your creativity a bit. So I would suggest like if you're ever having a creative block, kind of like corner yourself almost into areas that you think are too difficult to build in and then just give it a shot and try building in them because I feel like that's when you get the most creative ideas and I feel like it's really helped me kind of um, almost expand my like building repertoire. Now I feel like I've got more uh, techniques that I can draw from, more ideas. It's just really quite a fun thing basically and I that's going to sound super pretentious but I'm just saying it's, it's a really fun way to kind of get more creative and build in the game so definitely try that out if you're ever feeling like a creative block. But yeah those holes in the wall uh, are actually really great for the lemurs. In the cinematics you'll see they actually sit down there as well and they like hang out on those platforms. It's a lot of fun and um, it may look like the lemurs actually have a lot of points to escape from but they actually can't get out easily. They only have like um, with a relatively limited access to like for example the those blocky planters they only have access to the first platform they can't go any higher they can't really uh, climb on any of the the walls of the tropical house itself so it is all relatively safe and the lemurs aren't gonna go you know gallivanting around the rest of the park by any chance uh, any means so yeah um what exactly am i gonna do next there is a lot that happens towards the end of the episode because I get really into building climbing structures for these animals. And um, it's really fun building climbing structures, I think, especially in a zoo like this, with animals um, that make full use of them. You will see them using it. Unfortunately, I think I made mine a little bit too complex, so they do glitch through it sometimes as opposed to like smoothly running over the climbing structures. But I think, I think it looks fine, <laughs> basically, for the most part. And they, they seem to really enjoy the habitat. Here I'm just kind of like getting started with a bit more rock work just on the exterior so that it kind of has more of the kind of that zooey feel you know when you have artificial rocks that kind of um, block off some of the more well basically just fill in the gaps essentially. And adding more of these concrete walls just to kind of show that the animals are secure even in the edge pieces where it looks like they could climb out. Adding in some light. Um, oh, I just can't realize I complete. I must have forgotten to add in um, an educational like screen. So I might do that off screen at some point. Yeah, I try uh, messing up with some dead trees. They are a bit too kind of spiky for my liking, so I avoid them. Instead, I make use of these Himalayan birches. Uh, actually, are they Himalayan birches? I cannot remember what on earth they're called, but I love them. They're such beautiful trees. Uh, I used them so much in my first ever zoo build, which is Boomy Reptile Sanctuary. Absolutely beautiful plants, and I, I think they work really well here. I love the color of their leaves, the big white branches, and of course the animals can climb on this, so it's just really, really good. So I'm just messing around with some of the... Uh, like platforms and stuff, getting some ideas. First up, I needed an arboreal feeding platform so they can get fed. And I made a little platform so they can climb up onto it. So this is all completely accessible for them right now and they can climb onto these trees. And then I decided to add little uh, tiny platforms on the trees so they could go and sit on them and hang out with these little tiny pieces just to look, make them look like they are well supported. Looks like they've been nailed straight into the tree and looks like, you know, the lemurs can make full use of them. I don't know if I've seen them on there, um, I actually haven't recorded the cinematics yet, but when I do, I'll see if I can get them to sit on those little platforms because that would be so cute and I think it looks so good. Messing around with logs a little bit, I don't end up using any of these, but it's always worth just kind of placing things and seeing how they look be before you kind of commit to anything. Uh, here I decided to go with, instead of a full-on flat platform, I'm making like um, a square instead where they can come up to the middle and sit there and I think it looks pretty good and uh, yeah I've seen I've seen them use it so they definitely enjoy using it as well which is nice what else do I do here so basically a lot of the climbing stuff does take a little bit of experimentation to see what works and what the animals will actually end up using I do more of it on some of these other trees of course and then here's where I start working on the the kind of the path that leads them into the interior so they don't have to actually be on the ground at any point they can just climb across these points and then head into the interior 
I do have to change some of it because it turns out they can't actually access some of that stuff. So um, it took me a while. Here's me just trying to figure out how it w would look. Um, I don't go with this idea because I think it looks a bit too messy. I end up making a whole different set of platforms that will work better for the interior. And here's me just um, getting the, um, the path set up for the other um, hole in the wall as well. And adding in some enrichment items, just a couple feeders here, the suspended feeder and then a little sprinkler as well just to keep them all, all hydrated I guess. <laughs> On the inside I just put down this foraging box so it gives the lemurs incentive uh, to go on both sides because there's enrichment for them on both sides of the uh, of the wall. And then on the interior I decided to just kind of like go full on rock work and just cover the whole thing with artificial rock so it looks like you know you don't actually have soil on the inside of the building but you do have like an artificial rock type uh, habitat. But with I'll add some bedding in there as well so they do have some comfortable space to sleep on. But yeah, I decided to just go full on rock work here and I think it looks pretty cool in the end. Um, I don't actually add any plants on the interior but there are plants on the outside and um, there's of course the plant on the exterior of the <laughs> the exterior of the interior habitat, like you know the big rhubarbs up there. So it gives it more tropical vibe anyways and there will be glass up there so the lemurs do get more light coming in on the interior as well. I'm just messing around with that door. That door is not functional, but it just looks like the keeper now has a way to get from the interior to the exterior through the inside of the habitat instead of going out and around. And here is just, um, what is this? <laughs> oh yeah, no, I was just making some platforms. What is this? God, I just forget things sometimes. But yeah, I'm making some platforms around the side here. This is another way for them to walk around the habitat and get um, from one of the wall holes to the other without again without having to go on the ground if they don't want to because again these are very arboreal animals they don't really like spending time on the ground and um, yeah they're just uh, really cool I don't think I've ever actually used a red rough lemur in any of my habitats so this is definitely very new for me and uh, it's really cool because they are a very cool species um, they're not one I've seen in real life before I don't think I've seen like quite a lot of lemur species um, because I've been lucky enough to actually be go to Madagascar once um, so I've seen the ring-tailed, I've seen like bamboo lemurs, brown lemurs, but I don't, I don't think I've ever seen the red ruffed lemur. I have actually seen some of the bigger species, well like the Indri lemurs, those are crazy, they're huge. It's insane. But yeah, that's just me being lemur, in, talking about lemurs, what am I talking about? Oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah, here's more of the climbing structures, that ends up being the final structure that leads from the inside to the outside, I do copy and paste it around. Uh, here's me starting work on the roof of the interior of the habitat, just kind of making the walls fit and everything. But while we're doing that, I just want to say um, once again, big thank you for getting the channel to 1000 subscribers. Yesterday I uploaded a little Q&A video uh, along with some like uh, a bit of a setup tour as well. So you guys can kind of get to know what my setup is like and stuff like that. So if you haven't watched that, please do check it out. It was a lot of fun to edit a live video for once. It was a little bit weird looking at my face and being like, hey, that's that's um, that's me. <laughs> it's really strange, but also it was fun. So do check that out if you haven't yet. Uh, here's me adding in more platforms, just more platforms really. I just wanted to really, really make the most of the whole climbing structure here. I'm adding in some rope here. I end up switching these out for the curved ropes later. But um, it's just again more more space for them to climb around on and have fun on. Ends up looking pretty cool, I think. I think I delete these and like completely restructure the ropes. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but I'll, I'll take a break from it because I'm a lazy person. <laughs> If I'm not mistaken, actually, these uh, platforms here don't stay in place. I actually uh, delete them because the lemurs can't use them and I replace them with like those stairs that you see on the inside because they work a lot better. Ah, uh, yeah, here we go. Here's where I, I switch onto the actual curved rope and I think it looks a lot better. Um, I've, I don't know if the lemurs can climb on them. I think they can, so I'll have to check that when I record the cinematics, but I'm sure, I'm sure they'll be fine climbing on that. And yeah, there's not much else I'm doing here. What else do I even do in this episode, to be honest? Oh no, there'll be a lot of uh, fun work on those uh, rectangular, square, blocky planters in a second. Because I wanted the lemurs to be able to access at least the first platform. 
So yeah, this little gap, so I'm just filling it in with the uh, stained wood and then some mulch and then adding in uh, some plants as well. So, you know, just to give it a bit more interest, I'm adding in one of these sapling plants. The saplings are so useful. Oh my god, they really are. Here, I'm again messing with the walls here just so they line up a bit better. As you can tell, my building style is like completely chaotic. Like I just jump from one build to another like regularly. So I'm just adding in that wall and then I'll put in some glass here in a second. Just so the lemurs can get a bit of light and also from different parts of the tropical house you can look in and see the lemurs doing their thing. So I think it, 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 looked, it just looked really cool. Like I said, this has become very easily my favorite habitat build because it has all these really interesting features to it that I haven't really experimented with a lot in other habitats. And even now, well, well I do consider it kind of finished, but uh, I feel like I could still work with it a bit more to really, I don't know, to get more interesting elements to it, maybe add some decals or something to give it a bit more like color or interest. But yeah, it's just, uh, it was a lot of fun to, to build this really. Uh, just finishing up the roofs here. So there will be a lot of like roof work that I need to do in the tropical house, of course. This is just for this habitat area. Like the, the general roof of the building is not complete. In fact, the building doesn't even have all of its walls yet. I still need to work on that. Yeah, I'm just finishing up the area near the staff entrance. So there will be a glass wall and a concrete wall as well. And I think it looks pretty cool. It's got a very interesting look to it. It's very, um, again, very blocky, very almost brutalist. But I think the fact that we're having all this greenery that's going to be added in and I'll put in some lights and stuff, it gives it more warmth and more of a welcoming vibe. So, yeah. Again, I don't end up keeping that platform on the exterior because the lemurs can't actually traverse it that easily. So I switch it to the stairs that we did on the inside. And I think it works pretty well. I think that's the interior pretty much sorted. So now we're going to get to work on these planters out here, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, there we are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a foraging box up here, as you can see. This gives, again, the lemurs incentive to come up here. And then I'm going to basically just throw down as many plants as I see fit. And that is a lot of plants. I love the combination of these, uh, the diamond leaf willows and the white sage. They look so good together. I think that's what they're called. The, it has like the, you know, the yellowy green mixed with the bluey green. It's just such a cool look and I think it fits really well. And I think this is going to be one of my first times using Ivy since like the start of the game. Like I maybe used Ivy like a few times in like Boomy Reptile Sanctuary or something, but like that was months and months ago, easily maybe even a year ago. So this is my first time using Ivy in a long, long time. And I think it looks really, really good. Um, here, just kind of growing out, sinking it in a little bit more to, to make sure it doesn't look like it's too overgrown, but it looks really cool and it almost gives me vibes like, um, you know, games like The Last of Us, like where you have these big skyscrapers overrun with like vegetation and stuff, kind of almost gives me vibes like that. And I think it looks so good, so I'm very happy with that. Here's me just remembering to add in some bedding here on the inside so that the uh, lemurs have more place to sleep, making some of these platforms bigger and adding bedding so they can actually go to sleep on them. But yeah, the interior, again, this is why I kind of want to switch it out to one-way glass so the lemurs have more uh, reason to kind of go to sleep in here because they feel more secure. Just adding in a water pipe here very quickly, um, make sure they actually have access to water. Uh, the water bowl itself is hidden in the rocks, so it just looks like the water is dripping and the lemurs can just go and have a drink whenever they like, basically. We're coming up very close to the end of the episode now. Only a couple things left to do here. I am just adding in a little bit of a, a staircase. And then now I'm doing the final bit where I mentioned I was going to add in more of that uh, more rustic brown trim to the buildings. And of course now I'm going to uh, actually add in a proper entrance to the, to the tropical house. This is something I've been meaning to do for a while, I just kept forgetting. But basically I wanted an airlock system because I imagine the inside would be temperature and humidity controlled for all the tropical animals. Because again, we are in the, uh, the taiga biome, it is cold and the animals inside would need to have the atmosphere regulated a bit more. So I'm making an airlock system where you pass through one door, uh, go into a central room and then pass through another door to get inside. Um, adding in the doors, I wish we had big glass doors, like, you know, double-sided glass doors, something double-sided, I meant like, um, double doors basically, but glass. 
Uh, all we have right now are these single pieces which I have to rotate and kind of mess with to make it look like this. It looks too small but um, you can kind of finagle them to make it look like one big set of doors like that. Basically like that, yeah. And just adding in some wood, uh, I will have to put in a sign up there just where the two wooden dividers are above there. I, I think it looks pretty good, I, I really like that colour of the wood, Match it, it kind of matches quite well with the the saturation and the contrast of the uh, the green and the white, it just kind of fits really well. Just copying and pasting it um, over to the other set of doors as well, again we'll have to put in a sign there. But I think it looks pretty good, uh, really happy with how the doors turned out. And now we're just coming on to the last clip of today after I finish up the trim here. But that will be um, making a big sign for the tropical house. I wanted to think of a cooler name than just tropical house. But at the end of the day that's all I could think of was just the word tropical house. So you're going to see me build that now. It looks pretty cool. I like the colors that I chose. It's a uh, nice bright green with a nice like bluey tone to it. So that looked pretty cool. But yeah, that is pretty much it for today's episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. Um, I really enjoyed this habitat. I think it's one of my favorites that I've ever built again. Uh, so I do hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Um, I'm happy to like always chat with you guys if you have any feedback, so let me know. Do give the video a like if you did like today's video. And once again, feel free to subscribe for more Planet Zoo content. Go check out that 1000 uh, subscriber setup tour if you're interested. And as always, now that the sign is up there, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!